Warning! The following podcast contains strong language, which some listeners may find offensive. If you do... Up yours! That's only if you don't listen to the podcast. Otherwise, not up yours. Did you know the Untitled Wrestling Podcast is on all of the social media outlets? Give us a like, follow, share, subscribe, or even a review if you're feeling generous. Facebook and YouTube at Untitled Wrestling Podcast. Twitter, Twitch, and Discord at Untitled Rest Pod. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Untitled Wrestling Podcast. It is Tuesday. You know what that means. It is me, your boy, Big Tasty, joined once again by Faye and Jay. Uh, Faye, how are you? How's it going? I'm good. I've carved some pumpkins tonight, so that was fun. It is. It is. As we record this, it is the day. It is mischief night, Devil's Night. Uh, obviously, this is going on on Halloween, so it is it is peak spooky season. So yeah, fucking loving it. Uh, Jay. Yep. And to add? Um. Yeah, I lost the fight with a lamp. You did. You did get like smacked in the face by a big lamp. Yeah, which is. <laughs> yeah, I've got a black eye. <laughs> I love lamp. I mean, you better love lamp, lamp or it'll come for lamp you as well. Love me. <laughs> lamp is an abusive relationship. The lamp is very much yeah, the, the aggressor in this. Um, yeah. Lamp yeah. fucking hates me. Oh, I've yeah. had such a busy weekend that I've like, barely watched any wrestling. Like So, Saturday was the brewery's birthday, so I was like all week preparing for it, then like doing the, the, the thing on the Saturday. And then yesterday I went around to my mate's house and we played board games for seven hours and ate bar buns. It was great. Oh, about nice. ones. I haven't had one of them in ages. So yeah, that, that was that all happened instead of wrestling this week. Um, I watched. I've, I've seen. I've seen some of most shows. <laughs> if that makes any sense, we'll makes get no that. sense. <laughs> we'll get to that later. Um, um, don't worry about it. Should we start then? Uh, I was gonna say I'm gonna. This is gonna blindside you here. I was gonna start with news, but should we instead start with um, Faye? Me and you went to Atomic last week. We should we did. talk about? Should we talk about that first? That was a lot of fun. So this was Brew House of Horror. It was their spooky Halloween themed show in Asvex Brewery, um, which is lovely. We went to Costco beforehand and got big pizza. As always. As always, yeah. Um, and yeah, the show, I think this is the fourth show now? Yes. I don't think they've had a single miss. So far. No, we haven't. It's all been so good little few different things on this card we had some traditions like the opening Scott Oberman match that goes fucking hard yeah sets the tone for the murder to come so this time he was up against um it was Aiden Steen yeah yeah mm-hmm. poor poor Aiden him poor... losing on Halloween on a Halloween show feels like a hate crime also yeah you'll love this Scott was one of the only people who didn't come out in costume good lad because he doesn't give a nice. shit. <laughs> he's just he's too good really for it. Funny. Was Nat going his costumes are awful and I was like, that's his gear. Yeah, that's all, that's what he actually comes out in all the time. <laughs> yeah. uh, Aiden Steen came out in like full spooky vampire, like hot boy vampire attire. Yeah. Well he came out he actually came out in in like it looked like regular clothes. Yeah. And then he like ripped the pants off and he was wearing the fishnets and the skirts underneath. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Aiton Steen is great, uh, but Scott Oakman fucking murdered him. Um, yeah, he did. I thought his neck, like, I got, like, flashbacks to that Wrestle Island show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, then, what was, was it the tag match second? It was, yeah. I loved this. So, have you seen Synergy, Jay? Do you know who they are? I know Synergy, big lads. Yeah, Troy Glad Ryan and Anderson, and Anderson Daniels. Um, they are the beefiest boys. So there's, 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 there's a gimmick in Atomic where Made to Last are like the unofficial champions. They got some like gold jackets done to like wear to signify their championship status. And before the match started, um, Synergy like took the jackets off them and went to put them on. And as soon as they put them on, they like flexed and the sleeves all ripped. <laughs> it was so good. They came out as dressed as in the Dior. Sorry, the John Paul Gaultier Sailors. Yes, yeah. Um, made the last, yeah, and they had they had a boat. They had a cardboard boat. It was great. <laughs> it was very funny. Um, Synergy just came out as Synergy, which is fine. They I'm are. not going to tell them they can't come out like whatever Synergy, they want to. 
Synergy slaps so much meat. It's incredible. It is insane. It was nice um, that I got to cheer them as well because the heels in TNT. Yeah, so in Ignition, they were like Shreddy's boys, weren't they, when you were feuding with yeah. Um, yeah. Simon Miller? Yeah, they were. But yeah, yeah, they were like, oh, wow. they were proper baby faces here. They were great. They, oh, they, it, was, it was so much fun. Made the last, stole the win. Um, but yeah, it was it was a really, really fun match. And then we had the spooky rumble. Yeah, I didn't expect to get this so early on in the match, in, in the cards. It felt like a treat. This was incredible. So you had Dylan McCarthy came out as Bob from Bob's Burgers with a spatula. And, and he, was was... he was hitting people with a spatula. And he shaved his beard, so it was just the moustache yeah. as well. Yeah, that was really? great. You had um, Holly Hudson as a pink shark. Yeah. Um, you had Lana Austin Act as Bob. Is... Oh, yeah, Lana Austin. Lana Austin as Barbie, and then a reluctant Rob Drake as Ken. Ken, in, like, so, Barbie's gym outfit. So at one point, like, Rob was in the ring, Lana just bailed out the ring, and she was sat, like, literally in front of us. And at one point, I just, I shouted, go on, Rob, and she turned around and looked at me and went, he's Ken. <laughs> <laughs> Was, oh my god! It was great. Yeah, Tony Wright was the Undertaker with, um, with a fake ass, with fake ass padding. To which, when he got in the ring, I shouted, "That's gimmick infringement!" And Lana was like, "Yeah, absolutely." <laughs> um, um, who else? We had, we had two as greases from Greece. Well, they, they specified they were supposed to be Juice and Domino. They looked like Brilliant. they were. They, did, they, they, looked like, they, looked, they looked like two rando T birds, but they were actually supposed to be Juice and Domino, uh, which is also that, which also worked. I mean. That was pretty much Juice and Domino's gimmick. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Um, we had so... um, Leah Raven. Oh, no, that was the women's match. Was that the women's Yeah, it was, wasn't it? That was the yeah. women's match. We um... had uh, Kingsley, who before the show was protesting about fancy dress, was made to dress up in another shark costume, and him and Harley Hudson I had, think like, Kingsley sh- was going to hit and hit me with that hammer early on. Because <laughs> every hit... time he walked past, I just booed him. Kingsley and, La- and Harley had a shark off, which was great. Yeah. And then Isaac North came in, and it looked like he was going to hit Rob, because he didn't recognise him, because he was all kenned up, and then he, he stopped and hugged him, and we had an actual Barbenheimer moment. Yeah, of like... it, was, it was delightful. <laughs> we had Rob Drake and, and um, Isaac North in the middle of the ring, which was fantastic. And then at one point, um, ha- um, uh, Lana was going to fall over uh, off the apron, and Rob went to grab her to save her, and grabbed her hair and pulled her wig off. Yeah, <laughs> and L- Lana was so like upset and disgusted. She just jumped off the apron and walked off. Brilliant! It was delightful. Um, for the whole show, Greenwood was dressed <laughs> as Beetlejuice, which was incredible. And we, I saw that. Uh, Chay Burley was dressed as the Candyman, except he came out singing the song "The Candyman" by um, from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. <laughs> yes, and then um, him, uh, El- and then El- he had a beard of bees. Yes, we just have to have the B written on his face loads because he, he didn't want actual beers. Uh, and LK was dressed as a zebra, which was also really good. Very, very cute because that's what <laughs> that's what Ian Greenwood calls all his refs. Yeah, calls them zebras. Um, I think who else? I'm, I'm missing some people out of the, of the rumble. I don't, I don't want to do anything with the service because everyone in it was great and I really enjoyed yeah. it. Jack Richlow was in it, wasn't he? No, he has a match with the no, you know, he, he had a singles match. Yeah. Um, th- there's so many people in this rumble. Let me see if I can get a. Let me see if I can get a list up. Da, da, da. Sorry, da, pro da, wrestling da. events. Nope, they've only got the first two on on the internet. That's. Oh my I'll, days. I'll go on their Twitter and see if they've got anything on there. But it was it was it was great anyway. Um, <clears throat> and the oh, main. Helen of- Charlotte Campbell came out as Vegeta. Yes. Yes, that was incredible. Um, Gina was in the Rumble. Oh, Gina was so yeah. good. Yeah, Gina, Gina was amazing. Gina was, Gina, Gina was second in, and yeah. Um, there was a really fun spot as well. I've just seen a clip on Twitter when um, Isaac North came in, and um, Dylan McCarthy went to hit him with a spatula, and it just broke on his chest. It did. Lewis Johnson was in for like two seconds, but he did a whole Negan spot. Yeah, so he came in with like a, he came in like a barbed wire baseball bat and got everyone to like line, like line up on their knees in front of him, and then he was like, wondering who to hit and then they all just got up and jumped him and threw him out and he took a nasty nasty bump on the on the ring apron so they're actually going to put the whole monster match rumble up um for free on their on their on their youtube so keep an eye out for that they've put uh, they put like a three minute clip up of it so far but yeah it'll if all be up there a, um if this was oh um sam gradwell 
Yeah, Sam Gradwell just made his debut. Yeah, just turned up. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he was, was, was the surprise He was, he was yeah. a surprise. He was the wild card. Yeah. Nice. So yeah, so that was. I think uh, that's everyone. It was only thirteen people, wasn't it? It was only thirteen people. Yeah, and um, it was won by uh, Tony Wright, which was fucking awesome. Yeah. I've been waiting for him. Waiting for him to win, win the big one for a while. That's that's been quite nice. Uh, yeah, that was great. After the show, after the uh, interval, we had um, well, the main Critchy versus Ethan Kelly. Yeah, that was fun. Uh, so many Critchy's mates were there. There were so many, like just Pierre Scallies. It was so good. <laughs> it was great. Um, and then we had. It was quite. It was quite a concise show. It was. It was tight. I, I think all of the atomic shows have been quite tight uh, in terms of the, the the sort of way they put together. It's all. It's all flowed really well. I think. Yeah. Oof, was Joe Kessler there? He was. He was on the poster. Nope, he was not. I didn't reading. think he was there. He didn't wrestle. Because when I was like, yeah. I, I didn't realize the main event was going to be the look match we got, and I was like, is Kessler in the main event again? Because he's always in the main event. Who's he wrestling? And it wasn't. It was. Good match. Yeah, we had um, we had Alexis Falcon versus Leah Raven, which was great. Yeah. Um. Before that, though, we had um, we had two bits and Chase Alex Chase Alcala. Yeah, Chase Alexander's changed his name, and he's got a spooky mask. But he's like all mask. kinds of like vicious. And which is, is one great. Of the most underrated wrestlers in, in the UK at the moment. He's fucking incredible. Stuart's and he's great. so over in Atomic. Yeah, he's like a massive face in Atomic. Everyone loves him. It's amazing. <clears throat> he came out as Ratatouille. Yes, he came out as Remy because he's the Rat King, and he did My a spot where he got on, he did a spot where he got on Chase's back and used his hair to control him. <laughs> it was incredible. It was, very good. it was so much fun. And then the main event we had Lizzie Evo versus Sam Bailey. Nice. I and saw Sam the- Bailey was dressed as Harley Hudson. <laughs> Yeah, so he came out. So he came out. Hardy Hudson's music started playing, and then like it came out. It came up like Hardy Hudson on the screen, and then like a like, crossover it, and then like Sam Bailey came out in Harley's gear, and it was like, oh my god, this is fucking cursed. And um, Lizzie had to take about five minutes to like compose herself because she couldn't yeah. stop laughing. Lizzie, Lizzie was just fucking gone. Um, <laughs> yeah, was Sam great. wasn't it, even like a heel in that because of that either. Like no, it but, was like. Well, I mean, the crowd was very much behind Lizzie as they should be. Oh yeah, be. of course. Um, yeah. But it was it was a really really fun match. Lizzie got the win as she should. Um, and then after the match, looked like uh, look, Sam was like, "Oh, I'm really Don't sorry." Like a shark. I know he was like, "I'm really sorry." Like, and he was gonna he was like, "Come on, let me let's let's like let's like hug it out." And then he like as he as he did, he like smacked Lizzie. He was like, "Did anyone not see that coming?" <laughs> and everyone was like, "Yes." And then yes, he was like, "Yeah, br- bring out the shark to attack you." And it, the shark came out, and obviously we all knew it was Harley. You could see into the mask, like it, the, you could see the person inside the shark had bright pink hair. <laughs> so it was like we know that's Harley. So as soon as Harley like unzipped the shark costume, jumped out, she battered him, and then like Lizzie battered him, and then yeah, it was. And Scouts and Proud are fine. They're not going to fight in Hooters. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Um, shout out to Leah Raven who came out dressed as Sam Bailey. Yes, yes, she did, which is incredible. So yeah, someone Leah came out dressed as Sam, and then Sam came out dressed as Harley, which means I'm sure it means Harley must now dress as Leah Raven. I don't, you know. Ah, oh, that'd be great. <laughs> but I'd no, it be was okay with that. It was a really, really, really fun show. Um, the fourth one we've been to now. How many people can say they've been to a hundred percent of an entire like promotion show? Is that's pretty fucking cool, isn't it? You know. The next one is on the sixth of September. December. December. That's the one. I have the tickets here, and they are Christmas themed. Yes, because this might shock you, but Faye won the raffle, so she won some tickets. I what? don't believe you. <laughs> that, that doesn't sound like something that would happen see now and what that... I do is I give these to Nat and Pete and then they can't not go it works you already know you're going to buy it's like six work. tickets anyway exactly that, that's <laughs> what it is um, yeah so really really fun show um, yeah any any sort of over overarching feelings for anything you want to talk about specifically before we move on um, I want like I want them to Include more quintessential, but obviously the roster's massive, so you can't have them on every show. And they were there. They were there. <laughs> um, and so was Casey. And so was Casey, yeah. Um, and then Casey told me off for looking at other people's merch, which I thought was very funny. <laughs> um, but now just give us, just, I... give us Scott, just give us Scott Urban versus Tommy Jackson, please, just once. Yes. 
just get VGS on there. That's what we need. Um, what else I want is Tony Wright to like if they start doing belts, I'm throwing Tony Wright out there as first atomic champ. The, 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 he's, he, is, he, is like, he is very much like the, the Brian Danielson of like not more like the Daniel Bryan of, of like Northwest Brit Wrestling like, in that he's like the, the sort of crowd favourite underdog who's yeah not yeah. supposed to be there maybe but like we're gonna we're gonna make it happen we're gonna will it into existence we've got, we got you yeah. Tony so I'm putting my money on that Tony Rice's first Wrestle Atomic Championship I, I reckon it'll be old man I mean he's is is He's been rip- he's he's undefeated. He's at, he he has been ripping through that roster. It's only him and Kester. I think are undefeated now. But by way of crime and Tony Wright, probably. Yeah, it's um, definitely going to be that, isn't it? Probably. Like, Who's going to get the shiny jacket? No one yeah. in Atomic has belts, just jackets. <laughs> I think they should be a jacket-based promotion. I, I would I would be big in for that. It's, it's certainly set them apart. I'd, I'd enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, right. Should we move on to a bit of news and maybe talk about Harley Hudson some more? Yeah. Uh, I was going to say we. Why we would we talk about Harley Hudson some more? Some more Harley. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm I'm surprised that you're not like losing no, your I shit am. right now. Like... I did lose my shit. I did. Yeah. I did. I've never been happier. I don't think. Um, like, oh my god. Yeah. So TNA, um, Impact, whatever you want to call them. We spoke about them a lot last week, and Faye still doesn't like believe half this real. Yeah, I really don't. Um, which we are going to play a game later of whether it's a real or fake storyline that me and Tasty are going to give you. But first of all, let's talk about the two new signees, because they basically picked like two of the most promising talents from the UK indie scene up in one fell swoop there, didn't he? Um, yeah. First of all, on Saturday, they signed Leon Slater to a long-term deal. Um. For anyone who hasn't seen Leon Slater, he is 19 years old, and I think he might have some kind of magic amulet that makes him as good as he is. <laughs> um, Definitely. He's unreal. Um, so so much, like, comes across so much more experience than someone his age. Um, and also Harley Hudson, who, again, one of the... She, she won TNA's gut check, which was essentially like the tryouts... Um, Been signed to a developmental contract. Yeah, so she's going to be going over to a train in Canada. Um, That's, that's so cool. Insane. <clears throat> yeah, uh, I, I can't remember who it was. Someone, someone said, "Make sure you slow down your voice so they can like understand your accent." <laughs> um, oh my god! Hey, you can boot all worldwide. You fucking love to see it. You do love to see it. Um, yeah, like to. To, I can't think of two more like deserving people to get this opportunity as well, because like those two of this year have just had like amazing years on the indies. Um, we we were saying maybe Jay before we started this recording while we were in for fate, like we were saying like we thought Harley might break out into the UK at some point this year or like next year, mm. but like we didn't see this coming. This is like fucking mind-blowing it's so i mean leon yeah. leon we all sort of accepted at one point he's just going to but go to america he's and, he's not, yeah, and, he's, and he's just not coming back i mean he's been on gcw like twice hasn't he so more than twice he's been on loads um but yeah like um i think leon it was very much like cna just going this guy's like got so much hype around and we should sign him before one of the big I ones get him he does yeah and to be fair, I think for his development, it's a fantastic sign. I think so as well. It does mean that TNA, of well, what what will become TNA now, have got such an exciting young roster. Like there's so much. I mean, it reminds me of like the glory days, like 2008, 2007, like the X division. You know, that being like the, the most exciting division in professional wrestling, yeah. having having guys like AJ Styles, <laughs> Christopher Daniels, Samoa Joe, low key. You know, people like Jerry Lynn, like guys who could really go and were and had like years ahead of them. And now you've got like Trey Miguel, Leon Slater, you've got Harley Hudson. That women's division is fucking popping. Uh, you know, Alan Angels is doing like awesome work in TNA. Alan Angels is doing bits. Yeah, like fucking speedballs yeah. there. You know, Giselle Shaw's there. Um, I mean, yeah. Leon, Leon Slater wrestled Frankie Kazarian this week in, in the yeah. Impact shows. 
Frankie That's Kazarian, awesome. Mark Haskins, and Trey Miguel, which is three massive names for him to be wrestling at 19 years old. Yeah. Um, it's but, so funny yeah, because, it's... like, it's like, it's like they went, oh, um, we've got TNA. We want the entire of Liverpool to watch Sounds. <laughs> Let's sign this girl. Now, what, um, we need, what we need now is next year on the TNA UK tour, Hardy Homecoming show at the Echo Arena, please. Fucking book it. Oh, nah, my God. Do, Imagine. Do, do the old do, school one. Yeah. Do it in the Olympia. Do it in the Olympia. Yes. Oh, yeah. Like they did the fifth, like that. The Olympia is in the TNA game because AJ yeah. Styles specifically requested it be the <laughs> Liverpool Olympia. <laughs> it's one of his favorite venues to wrestle in. Um, I'm going to message Harley and be like, listen, next year when this happens again, tell them to do the Olympia. You've got a politic for a I, show at the Olympia. Get on, get Scott the Moors here and be like, yo, Scott, fucking book this lad, you know? Yeah. I think he was at, he was at the Olympia shows last time. Um, but yeah, it's it really is exciting, like TNA coming back, isn't it? Like, yeah, make a, a week after they make this like statement, like pair of signings, it's like, okay, yeah, you've got my attention. Okay, I um, guess I'm watching TNA now. And it's nice as well. They've they've gone back to their roots. Like like I said, they've gone back to their roots. Like young, exciting wrestlers. Also, one of the hallmarks of early TNA was their massive presence on UK television and like their their sort of acknowledgement of UK fans. Like someone made a point on Twitter and it was a very good point. You you see in a lot of wrestlers now who are like in their twenties, young up and coming wrestlers, they all watched TNA when they were growing up because mm. they didn't always have Sky and WWE was on Sky. TNA was on on Freeview. And so there's a whole generation of wrestling fans and wrestlers who grew up watching old school TNA. And, and, like, and we, um, we we, we hey, meme about gotta follow them. Yeah, well, we meme about it, and we're like, oh, TNA, that was a fucking weird thing. A lot of people actually properly watched it. And, like, you've got guys like Act 2 who are like, Benjamin Harlan was at the fucking Impact Zone, you know, 10 years ago. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. You know, and, like, they've grown up to become wrestlers, and and they got into wrestling through TNA. And now they're doing, the, you know, I mean, I love AEW. I I, I love them. They're they're great. But one show, as opposed to TNA, have just done four shows. Oh, you can tell. You know that's and that's yeah. how that's how you serve that's how you serve your UK fan base and like, do it properly. They were, I believe, they were all sellouts anyway. Yes, um, they were. Yeah, well, he had to add that extra Coventry date, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. Coventry. Like with respect to Troy, who the fuck's going to Coventry? <laughs> yeah. And and also like on on that. Why tour, would Troy buy like, all those seats? Why would Tony Khan do this? Um, <laughs> <laughs> also on that tour, like the Glasgow show was a um, uh, TV taping. And the Newcastle show was a pay per view. Yeah, yeah, they, so, they filmed Turning Point out in the UK, which is amazing. Yeah, um, so they they obviously like they they recognise that when they were kind of like at their like sort of peak, they arguably had a larger UK fan base than they did an American fan base. But yeah, to the point where they genuinely had talks about relocating the company to the UK. Yeah. Like that that was a discussion that actually happened. Like I I think them coming back and obviously focusing on what made TNA such a great company at times. Well is did you awesome. notice that um when they announced it, they announced it through the Impact Wrestling UK Twitter as well. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah, they do they would do because it's it's gonna get more traction from like UK fans who might know a Leon Slater and might know a Harley Hudson. Mm-hmm. Whereas the the American fans know Leon Slater because as I say, he's been he's he's wrestled now for what New Japan, GCW, multiple I can't times. Wait GCW. for the wrestling fans to know Harley Hudson. I mean mm. the fans who watched GCW on Fight all yeah. know who Harley Hudson is. Yeah. Well, I, th- I think with it being developmental, I think it might be a little while till we actually see it. But I, I do think like come, come the turn of next year, we might start see like seeing her in TNA. Um, wow. I, I, th- I think. I mean, I, I don't know whether Leon's on the same deal or if or a similar sort of deal. In or case if it was just a to... regular deal, wasn't it? Because he's yeah. um, because this was like on the show, wasn't it? Just, just throw Leon in an Ultimate X match. He's done two in 
um, T- TNT now. Well, Neil's leaving the exhibition, man. What a, what a time to be alive. A couple of our other faves were at that um, gut check tournament as well. I, I saw Casey um, Payne was. Yeah, Casey Payne was. His vlog is going to be up on BGS's Patreon. But Polish oh, no, just, Barry. Polish Barry was there, yeah. Yeah, as well. Um, I know um, on one of the... Com- I don't know if it was one or both of the Coventry shows and Mia Jordan made a little appearance as well. Oh, cool. nice. Nice. Um, he's excellent. I want to see more of Mia Jordan around the UK because um, he's great. But yeah, exciting t- times indeed. Before we do segue away from TNA, Tasty, um, what's the storyline we're going to try and convince Faye, whether it's real or not? Um, so I, dropped, I, dropped, I dropped one IRL. Um the other day, which was when Karen Angle was trying to make AJ Styles do the sex with her so that he'd be on Team Angle. Yeah, that that happened. Um, and and also when um when they tried to turn Ric Flair's uh, sorry AJ Styles into new Ric Flair. Yeah, that was that and was AJ dark Styles because he's a good Christian boy. He is a good <laughs> Christian boy. I mean, I, I'm saving Claire Lynch. I'm keeping that for a special occasion. Oh no, we 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 need to build a clear lynch. We can't just we can't just drop clear lynch. Um, that, I mean, that's that's like none of these words I mean nothing to me at the minute. Like I don't know don't who clear about lynch it. is. Okay. Um, let, let, let me find one. Hang on. Okay, I can grab one. Um, are we done? Did, we, did we do some with Joe? Which bit? The nation of islands. Yeah. The, the, the ninjas. What? No, we haven't done some with Joe and the ninjas. So Samoa Joe had a match. I believe he lost. Uh, so Samoa Joe debuted um, in TNA, basically, and he was a sensation. He went on like a one-year undefeated streak. He was like the hottest guy in the company because he's fucking I'd Samoa like Joe. Really do angle. Yeah, yeah, these ma- matches with Kurt Angle. Be- beat Angle to become world champion um, in 2008. And so, basically, he'd lost a match. I think it was the night he lost a match to Orlando Jordan. Um, to a that, lot, that, a lot. It was definitely... It was definitely Hogan Bischoff here. Yeah, he, he lost to a lung blower and Orlando Jordan beat him. And then after the match, he was in the car park for some reason and he got beat up by like some masked guys like who were dressed like ninjas. And they threw him into a white van and drove off. And then a few weeks later, there was a, like a video where Joe was like, they're coming, you don't know what's going to happen. And he was like all like distressed in like a spooky dark room. And then nothing ever happened. And then he just came back like three months later. Uh, um, yeah. You know what the funniest part of that is? WWE tried to recreate that like in 2020 or 2021. Yeah. So basically what was meant to happen then was Joe was meant to come back as like a super heel and apparently loads of like the top baby faces got hurt and so they were like, oh no, we need Joe back as a baby face so we'll just like cancel the entire angle and bring him back. Yeah. What 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 about Ninjas? what about Nate what about Nation of Violence Samoa Joe? Are we going to talk about that or? Nation I don't know an awful lot about Nation of Samoa Joe, but yes, um that's definitely so, a thing that happened. Samoa Joe dropped the world title and then he went he he was off telly for a little bit and then he came back with like sort of like Samoan themed paint like face paint and like typical Samoan gear that, it looked like, like a Mike Tyson face tattoo to be fair yeah and he had a, he had a knife for some reason like a big knife yeah and he he, he tried to uh, slit Scott Steiner's fo- throat with a knife at one point uh, while Scott Steiner was on his weight bench about to have sex with a lady um <laughs> And Scott Stein is just like, put, put the knife down, Joe. Put the knife down. Put the knife. And Joe just fucks off. And then Scott Stein is like, did you see that? That man had a knife. Fucking, ah, oh, good old Steiner and Samoa Joe feud was great. Tell you what, do you want to talk about? If you want to talk about. say. Go on. That, that, that went into a feud with the main event, Mafia, where then Samoa Joe was about to win the world title and gave it to Kurt Angle and joined yeah. the main event, Mafia, even that though was... he was like, He'd been fuming with him for months. That was a whole. We'll talk about. We'll, I feel. I feel like we need to do the main event mafia separately because that's too big a deal. We'll do that another time. Um, but yeah. Before we before I want to talk about a different type of mafia before we move on. Go on. I want to talk about the Voodoo Kin Mafia. Oh no! Oh no! So back in 2006, Faye, the WWE brought back DX. However, they only brought back Triple H and Shawn Michaels. They did. They had no room for Sweet Daddy Ass and the Do Double G. So what did they do? They got on the phone to their boy Jeff Jarrett, and he hooked them up with some nice contracts. So they came yeah. into um, they came into TNA, and they came in. Not they couldn't be the New Age Outlaws because that was all trademarked. They had to be oh, something no, else. No, no. 
Road Dog was already in TNA at oh, that point. He was, sorry, yeah. Um, but they couldn't be. They couldn't be the. They couldn't be the, the New Age Outlaws. Uh, so they had to be something else. So they call themselves the Voodoo Kin Mafia, which is the initials of VKM, which is Vince McMahon's initials. Oh my God. So this was basically what if, like, DX, but all the good ones have left. Um, oh no. It was. It was also. Um, it it was literally like the most like thinly veiled attempt at like the New Age Outlaws trying to get re-signed by WWE while being in TNA. But they were like they'd call Triple H Shawn Michaels by their shoot names on TV. Yeah. They call out Vince on TV. They invaded a WWE house show and like no one gave a fuck. Yeah. Really? It was, yeah. It, it was fucking great. <laughs> <laughs> it uh, and so then cool. and then yeah, after a while they were just like, oh, the WWE never acknowledged us, so we win. Um, and then I think it just went away. Yeah, so it's yeah. fine. Brilliant, absolutely. I'm glad that oh. um, Daddy Ass is doing better. Daddy Ass is in a better place now. Yeah, it's it's it's, yeah. it's fine. <laughs> to be fair, he looks in better shape now than he did in this this time in TNA. Yeah, he looked, he, looked a, he looked a bit of a mess when he was a TNA at this point. Like, um. So yeah, I'm we'll move on. To... We'll, we'll, we'll see. We've got some big ones there, but we'll save them for another time. Um, because we've got like Ace and Eight. Oh. We've got like Main Event Mafia. There's there's a lot of meat on oh, these bones. Fucking hell, Aces and Eights. <laughs> <laughs> right. So let's move on to some more news, eh? Uh, let's keep the ball rolling. Um, um, I think we can close well, the book on TNA for now. Yeah. Well, GCW have just announced um the collective dates. Which they have. Are the fourth to the sixth of April, in yeah. uh, Penn's yeah. Landing Caterers. In Philly. Absolutely. Yeah, the the logo's pretty cool. It's like a Philadelphia Phillies baseball logo in it. Yeah, Tony Deppin's very excited, as you can imagine. At so, least I Tony know what they do in Fuck Off. On so many people. Um Yeah. Yeah. That'll be that'll be fun. I'm looking forward to that. Collective's always fun. Um, I love the collective. I'm I'm gonna book it off and me and Aaron are probably gonna drink ourselves into oblivion over a Zoom <laughs> call again. Well Aaron might even be a Liverpool at that point, who knows? Oh God! Don't say that. Oh my him. God! Like Beetlejuice, don't don't, don't, don't say his name too many times. Don't, don't say his name too many times. He will fucking appear. That's like the, <laughs> the thing that Scott do. Joe Henry's the same. He's only just got um, back to Scotland from the weekend. I know. Uh, I'm still recovering from the weekend. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, yeah. So uh, uh, the one, we, the only thing I, I I want confirmed, I need to know: Are we going to get insane clown bussy at the collective? Probably. That'd be fun. Um, so this is this is something that's happening in a, in a show in November. We've got Violent J teaming with Effie and Alicatch uh, to form an attack, and they're going up against um, the Mortons, so Ricky Morton and his son, and that guy George South, the guy Ryan hits. George South, Ryan's favorite wrestler. <laughs> George South. Um, George South. George South. Um, Insane clown buzzy. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. while while we're on the so I'm I'm hoping as well we do get um we we do get another uh, spring break because every time there's going to be a spring every time it gets around this year like Joey Janela teases that they're not going to do another one. Um, so, so the only thing I want the only thing I want in the next sort of six months is I want this tag team to come out to a version of WAP performed by Insane Clown Posse. Oh, that would be so good. I don't think the, I don't think the world's ready for that. I think um, Joe would Joe would die of of just pain. I, I I don't want Joe to die. We've still got like episodes of Two Nations under Ted to record, um, and then whatever we do after that. Um, yeah, should should we talk about um while on the subject of Joseph of Janella? Should we talk about um that he's going to be debuting for New Japan? Yeah. I'm what? Sorry. Oh, do you not know? Have yeah. you not seen? No. So New J- New Japan Strong uh, had a show um, over the weekend, and uh, it in- involved Shingo Takagi becoming the new Never Open Weight Champion, um, amongst other things. Eddie King- Kingston regained the retained the title against uh, Hanare, um, but they announced the next card, which is going to be like literally in- about a week star or so. One, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so I'm just gonna I'll run down the card and let's see how excited Faye gets because there's quite a lot on there. So let's start with Joey Janela first. Uh, we've got Joey Janela versus Toru Yano. Um, oh my god, that's gonna be silly nonsense. That's gonna be absolutely <laughs> ludicrous. I can't wait. Um, we've got 
Mystico on his redemption tour against TJP. Um, I'm sure that'll be really fun. Um, ELP and Hikaleu versus the West Coast Wrecking Crew for the tag titles. Wow. Um, Zack Sabre Jr. defending the NW uh, the NJPW World TV Championship against Speedball Mike Bailey. Um, I saw that before and got very excited. Yeah, uh, the never open weight championship. Shingo is going to be defending it against Trent Barretta, um, which um, is a match. Me and Tasty were talking about this. Is a match that we never knew we needed until yeah. we got told about it. Then. Um, the IWGP Women's Championship, Mayo Iwatani against Stephanie Vakir. Uh, if you haven't seen Stephanie Vakir, she is excellent. Uh, she had a really good match with Mercedes Monet in the tournament that they yes, had for did. that belt. Um, and the main event, the New Japan Strong Openweight Championship, Eddie Kingston defending against Satoshi Kojima. Which, Fred? yeah, Brett Bre- oh, Dad's getting there. going to be insane. <laughs> There's going to be so him, many. You know him and Eddie are going to go out for a sensational dinner afterwards? Oh, it's going to be the bread. best dinner ever. Uh, is it going to be just bread? Just bread. A, a selection yeah. of breads, yeah. I, I think that would be bread, bread and like oil, like it's in the Mediterranean or something. Um, but yeah, it's a really nice really, sandwich. Really stacked card. Um, also, uh, it won, like, also on the card who haven't had matches announced yet, Bears saying is uh, John Moxley, um, David Finley and Kenta are, are on the poster, and a couple of other CMLL guys. So I don't know who Mox is going to murder, but yeah, someone. <laughs> Julia's so, yeah, just that's... being called out by Trisha Dora, hasn't she? Yep. Who? Um, who is that how you say her name? Is it Julia? Oh, Julia's. Yes. Ooh, yeah, that's yeah, good. that's gonna be fucking stiff. I'm here for um, that. Um, so yeah, that's um, I, I think that that will probably be happening on that as well, won't it? Yeah, well, uh, Julia hasn't got a match announced to that. Um, yeah. So you'd assume so. Yeah. Um, I'm just having a look. What else there is? Uh, should we talk? We the, uh, there was OTT at the weekend as well. There was, um, um, most notably, John Moxley versus Trent Seven. Yeah, apparently, it was really good. I've seen some pictures. Um, I, I saw, and I saw a picture of well. Yeah, we, we've seen the aftermath pictures. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, saw, I saw that Mox got skewered by Trent, which, yeah, sound. He did. <laughs> um, yeah, th- there was a lot, of, a lot of wrestling this weekend, um, to be fair, all, all over. The UK, uh, I know Progress had a couple of shows as well, or a show, um, and obviously we the aforementioned Impact or, um, but yeah, um, so let's talk about contract news, shall we? Because there's a that's lot always, of that's, w- that's always fun. Yeah, there's a lot of WWE talent whose contracts are due up in 2024. Most notably, especially given the fact that he's wrestling for the fucking world title at Crown Jewel next week, is Drew McIntyre. Uh, Fightful Select Are we back reported, on this again? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Fightful Select reported that he still hasn't signed a deal um, and that he's um, his contract is due up. It has less than five months left on it and it's up ahead of next year's WrestleMania. Um, oh my God! All the all the talent, namely Becky Lynch, have deals up in twenty twenty four as well. I believe. Um, I, I don't know if they've re- resigned, obviously, but I believe that New Day and the Street Profits have got their deals coming up. If I recall, I remember seeing something about their deals being up in twenty twenty four. So, again, lots of a uh, lots of lots of potential movements, and it's not just limited to the WWE. Because MLW as well have had former world champion Alex Hammerstone and their tag champions uh, Lance Ananwahi and Juicy for now um, ask for their releases. The tag champions have been granted them. Yes. Um, Alexander Hammerstone, he has been removed from the roster page, but 
according to Fightful, he doesn't want they uh, MLW don't want to um don't want to like let him go. His contract's due up in twenty twenty five. Um however he did he did actually take to Twitter and confirm this, which would indicate that maybe there's a little bit to it. Um he's he's a guy he's a guy I could see going to either WWE or AEW. He's just got he 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 looks like if Brock Lesnar had a boy. Yeah. Um Hammerstone. Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. He's a fucking meat castle. Um and he's very Lance is gonna go for um I think Lance is gonna go to WWE. Everyone seems to think that they're gonna go to um WWE. I I think he's it's been one of those things an hour that, as well. Yeah, it's it's one of it's one of those things um, that, like, you you tend to whenever there's anyone who's of that in of the that bloodline. bloodline, yeah, um, of that like kind of family lineage that gets like free agent status. It's instantly, oh, they're going to join the bloodline. Um, At what point is there too many of them? Yes, um, yeah. I, I mean it, it worked. It worked for Solo Sokoa. He's he's got a match with John Cena. Um, yeah, that's true. So. Yeah, it, it who knows, but it's a it's an interesting time, isn't it? And obviously, oh, that's yeah. that's before we even talk about the fact that Will Osprey is uh, going to be a free agent in February. Um, After Wrestle Kingdom, MJF still allegedly hasn't signed a contract. Uh, there's a lot of allegedly, people, allegedly. I don't um, think he will until 2024. I think I, you'll hear I, anything I, about it till then. I reckon, given the fact that World's End is in Long Island, and it's the thirtieth yeah. of December, I wouldn't be surprised if he did it there. Um, they are here getting work like Melcher. It's great. I know. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, there's a lot, as I say, there's a lot of um, a lot of potential free agents on the horizon. Um. Which, which, which um, is a really good sign that there's a really healthy wrestling industry out there with like lots of places. Like no one's too scared to make a jump now. No one's too scared to, to back themselves and to like move on from where they are. Which I really think yeah. is is an indicator of a really healthy like wrestling scene. Like you think back a few years ago when like pre pandemic even when like people were clinging onto contracts and releases seem like this big doom and gloom. Even when people get let go from WWE now, it's not a case of, oh my God, it's, I mean, it sucks that they lose their jobs, yes. But the first feeling now is always, oh, it'd be really exciting if they popped up in this place or if they had a match with this person or if they got into this company. And like, that's... It's a yeah. massive talking point, isn't it? Like, you're never like, mm. oh, this is, this is terrible. Their career's over. Even the people that like, you never see, like that have been off WWE TV or whatever. You're like, oh, great. Now they can wrestle and you're happy for them. Well, look, look at look at GYV. They yes. they've been free agents for two weeks, and they're one of the talking points of wrestling at the moment. Yeah, they've got, they, they, this, this might surprise nobody. They've just been announced for the next Future Shock show. I, I did I did see that uh, they put that big gif up saying soon. Yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah, it doesn't surprise me at all. Well, they um, were straight. They were straight into. A, we're talking about OTT. They were straight into OTT this weekend, weren't they? Had matches with the yeah. draw. Had matches with their one two one. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, and they've just got a um, merch release for Blacksmith as well. Oh, that's so good. I'm, I know Jay hates it because it's local based, but you know, yeah, I love um, the scarf. Uh, aren't they? Um, they, they got announced for Pro Wrestling Revolver as well, didn't they? Did they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that massive like LA show, which has got like sway of mocks, uh, Ronda Rousey. Um, <laughs> But yeah, it's, it, it's. I'm. I'm sure. It, I'm. I'm sure it was that one. It might have been it the December is. show instead. But they've. They've been. They've been announced for. Something. Oh my god! Give me GYV vs Switchblades, please. I. I don't think that'll happen. That'd um, be good. Only because. Only because the Switchblades like, aren't really. Um, they wrestle, wrestle together yet, though on. No, they've done it before. They've done a match on Revolver before, like oh, did they? after boxes. Yeah, yeah. I'm Terrible. sure they did. Um, let's have a little look. What uh, what was said about 
GYV in Revolver. Um, because I can't remember when it was announced. Um, I want them in PWG. Oh, yes. Have them right. versus the House of Black in the next fucking yeah. Mystery Vortex. Do it. Kings of, Kings of the Black Throne versus GYV. Book it. I, I have a feeling that uh, they want to be in PWG as well. Um, where are we? Oh, I can't find it. Um, but but either way, um, oh, it's oh no, that's that's something completely different. Where the hell is this? I'm I definitely saw something like <laughs> to do an for it. Are you making up music, Jerry? I might be. Do you announce for Blitzkrieg Pro, which is called Restival, which might be why I'm thinking Wrestling Revolver, and it looks very similar to the Revolver. Oh, so Restival's in so oh. Restival is fucking great. Restival's in London, right? No, like bound London ways. It is, isn't it? No, Restival. No, is that not the one where it's... I'm thinking of something different? The one in London, no, where they have all the um, they sometimes do those plays where they're all wrestlers. Oh yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Uh, no, this, this isn't it. This is in um. Say this. Is in, I think that's um, also called Restival, though. This is a show from Blitzkrieg Pro, uh, Pro on New Year's Eve. Ah, right, Eve, okay. Which means that GYV aren't showing up in GCW New Year's Eve, which makes me sad. Um, they could do the collective. Oh yeah, here we go. Um, they got announced for. Oh fuck me! They're wrestling the Rascals. Um. Oh, okay. Rest... Re- yeah. Wrestling Revolver season finale on the 2nd of December. That'll be so good. I, I knew I wasn't going mad. <laughs> I, I love how you did under. just fully doubt your own sanity there, though, when, like, you're just well, like, to nope. be fair, that, that Blitzkrieg logo, as I say, it looks very similar, like, at a glance to Wrestling mm-hmm. Revolver. It's a similar font. Um, but, yeah, there we go. Um, That'll be a lot of fun. Speaking of, Liverpool of Booking, speaking of Liverpool bookings, can we just can we just go back to something we we mentioned very briefly before? Is that there's been a first match announced for uh, live for a wrestling's show in Hooters? Yes, on the um, 26th of November. 23rd of November, 26th of Wrestling. I'm getting mixed up with all my great shows. I apologize. <laughs> go to both. The best to way both. to avoid go is to go to both, and then you so, won't miss either of them. So you said tickets were about like a tenner for this, did you say? Yeah, tickets are a tenner. If you've got children, they are sixteen pound for for an adult and child, or a family, two adults, two children for twenty five quid. Is this the one in Hooters, or is this? Yeah, this the one in Hooters, yeah. Wow, yeah, eight pound for a family show. VIP is um fifty yeah. pounds in Wrestle Island. Yeah, a single, an adult is ten pound plus one pound twenty booking fee. That's insane. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't know how this is going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know how many wings we're going to eat, but there's going to be a show in Hooters. Also, if you order them on, if you order the Hooters ones online, you will get a VIP match at no extra cost. Oh, cool. You'll get a match um, ahead of, if you buy them, like, not at the door. Also, your photo ops are only a quid. Oh, that's cool. And Tony, yeah. no- and Tony Knox takes the photos. Which are, like, what? as good as any professional wrestling photos yeah. you can get taken. Which, yeah. yeah. What? what? What's the wings situation there, though? That's all I care about. Like, I haven't been to Hooters yet. I, 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 would just, I, I would assume gratuitous. Not in this country. I've been to like one in Vegas, but the wings are good in Vegas. So hopefully, you know, we're in, okay. we're in the money. As long as they're saving them. Um, that's all that matters to me. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but the first, the first match I, has been I don't announced. Even about the rest, I just want to go for the wings. But the first match um, has been announced, and it's Lizzie Ever versus Harley Hudson, as we as we yeah. mentioned briefly before, and that's going to be I'm, fucking great. So I'm proud of mine. I may give a little bit of a fuck about the wrestling. I could be lying there. Yeah, um, I know. Scott Oberman's there as well. Yeah, Scott Oberman's there. Isaac North's I, there. I heard the rumor Scott Oberman's getting paid in exclusively wings. <laughs> um, and milk. And milk. I don't, I, I don't know about milk, but definitely wings. <laughs> um, um, and then the I'll show after you. that in December, um, Luke Jacobs is on. Wow. Nice. Yeah, and again, nice. the tickets are £10 to go and watch Luke Jacobs. So, Luke, talking about Luke Jacobs, he fought Kenta at OTT this weekend as well. And did oh. a little bit of one of them, didn't he? Yeah. A little too sweet. Uh, what? Apparently, apparently, apparently that match absolutely fucked as well. Like, it was apparently it was incredible. He's he's wrestling a uh, Shingo again, isn't he, as well, soon? Yeah. I love, Jake, I, I, love, I, 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 I love Luke Jacobs, just Japanese pain odyssey. It's great, isn't it? 
Oh, he's great. <laughs> it, it's 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 like Mox's um Mox's like Odyssey of violence against Japanese wrestlers, just yeah. with more chops. Mox being the forbidden door. Oh, Mox the fucking babadoo. Um, <laughs> Again, just just yeah. remind just reminds me of that Moxie promo where he's like, "Yeah, the forbidden door's open, but there's nothing good waiting for on the other side." Yeah, iconic. Yeah, man, I might go um, watch that later. <laughs> be, speaking of forbidden doors, um, sadly, it looks like someone might be out of Wrestle Kingdom. Sorry, Faye. Um, it's Brian Danielson. He is, uh, so from he's, what I've heard. Well, go on. He's um, got well, a he's, broken he's, orbital bone. He's hasn't he? broken his orbital bone. He's got to get surgery. Um, he might be able to wrestle with like a protective mask on, but he's got a month or so to get cleared before he can then go to do that. Yeah, and wrestle king. So, like, so interesting, in, interesting on collision. Um, Nigel Beginner said he'll be out until later this year. So the initial report is he's yeah. out for the rest of the year, and then Nigel Beginner's on collision said he'll be out until later this year. Later this year is what mm-hmm. he said. I, I I think he might he might get back for World's End. Um, I, I sure just, as shit just think that Nigel in the face. What if, what, what if he just surprised motherfuckers MGF and takes the title off him on the thirtieth of December? Don't give me hope. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I do. I do think, like, given the fact that, like, the way Ocado was reacting to Danielson holding his face, that maybe that might be the match they're going for. Um, although they did, they did tease Ocado and Claudio at some point, so they might do that. It's important um, to note, apparently, he didn't injure himself in the Ocado match. It was the um, Andrade match, Andrade apparently. Match. Oh, was yeah. it? He did have, like, a little welt under his eye. Yeah. And then, I well, he, he's... I mean, let's face it, you got orange punched and then remake it. It probably made it a lot worse. <laughs> yeah, that probably, didn't, got that, that, that probably didn't help. I was like, I oh can't... my God, Okada, stop it. Stop I it now. Okada's just a Brian Danielson killer. That's all he does now. He's just a phase fave killer. That's what he is. <laughs> I mean, I, I'd be happy if we don't get another Okada Danielson match if it means Danielson's safe. Yeah. From a car that's I'm just like, stay away from makers. all these people. Yeah. Um, Kenny, Adam Cole, now Braniel. Like, stop. I didn't hear Kenny, he did. Gave him vertigo? Ah, don't worry about it. Kenny was fine. Kenny's fine. Um, um, but any more news before we move along? I've got one thing I want to talk about, a little sort of back and forth story. Um, yes. So there was a report earlier in the week that there's been some sort of last minute creative changes at AW. There's been a sort of like some stories, like plans have been kept secret and like people have found out about plans quite late on. And there's been a bit of, um, what's the word, like dis- disconsent, dis- like sort of disfavor amongst mm. wrestlers. They've, they've not been, they've not really enjoyed it. Anyway, um, so the per- I think I don't know who first reported this, but basically they were replied to directly. Was it, was it, was it Raj Geary? No, it was Melter. Oh, it was Melter. Okay. Um, now Ra- Raj Giri was too busy getting drunk and throwing shade at Joey Janela and getting made to look like an asshole. I mean, um, fair. yeah, n- name a more iconic duo, Raj Giri and severe humility. Um, anyway, um, Jerry Lynn actually responded to these reports and basically spat bars. He basically said. Um, because wrestlers and God knows who else have and continue to leak info to the dirt sheets, podcasts, etc. So Tony tries to keep things confidential. You won't want to know everything before you see a movie. Anyone who leaks info is doing damage to the product and the industry. I mean, he's not that's lying. Fair. I mean, I'm, can you can you imagine like being in a relationship with like a, a a professional wrestling journalist and like imagine on Christmas morning if they like feel the need to tell you what's in every present before you open it? Literally. Yeah, like that's it, isn't it? I mean. I'm, I'm okay with things being surprising. Yeah, I mean, and if if the crux of this was, like, I'm, I'm just going to throw out a random name here. If it's Dax Harwood complaining to the media that he can't leak stories to the media, then you know. <laughs> I love that when Meltzer fucking outed Dax Harwood as one of his sources. <laughs> <laughs> that was so fucking funny. <laughs> so yeah, there we go. Um, Jerry Lynn, yeah. not a man, not a man you normally see, like stepping up and firing off shots on social media. But here we go. Cool, Uncle Jerry Lynn. Yeah. Um, I think that is actually everything now. I think I hope. 
Uh, um, well, you know, you said some stuff about sex, but that's like not really news uh, anymore, is it? So, mate, days end and why too? Um, <laughs> yeah, let, let's let's just go into AEW. Why not? Because yeah, there's, right. There's so a, cards on the happen. table. So cards on the table. I have seen weirdly the first hour of Dynamite and the first hour of Collision. Don't ask me how that happened. Like that's all I've gotten around to watching this week. Say so tasty. Um, I know. I, I, it's because like I was too tired after Atomic to watch it to stay up and watch it on Wednesday, and then like Thursday I was Thursday Friday I was busy, and like yeah the weekend just disappeared. So I've seen bits and I, and I enjoyed bits that I saw, but yeah you're gonna have to guide me through here. So Jay, do you want to take it away? I was also very yeah. tired on Wednesday, so it's all hit and miss for me. So I was up. Yes. I was just fading in and out of consciousness. Oh, dynamite book one. Um, yeah, so open a match. Uh, so we got another um, weird, like, devil thing at the start with MJF. Um, after he, he cut, like, a promo, essentially, just saying, like, oh, yeah, Adam's got surgery, he's, and he finally got out of Roddy's house. And Rod- Roderick Strong, Strong just shows up and starts screaming Adam at MJF. Uh, and MJF just kind of pushes that. Yeah. MJF's on the phone, and, like, <laughs> Roddy's just screaming, like, Adam, Adam. Down, down the phone, which was great. Rod- Roderick Strong's the fucking gift that keeps on giving. He's fantastic. Um, what weird then um, gimmicks we've all really bought, bought into, like these past couple of weeks. Don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, we, it, this went straight into MJF versus Juice Robinson for the Dynamite Diamond Ring. Good match. Uh, it was a good match. Ju- Juice got bust open uh, quite early on. Uh, very back and forth. There was a really cool spot where uh, I believe it was the finish actually where um, Juice got like his sort of like TK Max, Max ring out his pocket, yeah. went to hit uh, Max with it, and then MJF uh, had pulled out the dynamite diamond and hit Juice and picked up a win. Yeah. Uh, after the match, the Bang Bang Gang start beating up MJF. Uh, Roddy and the Kingdom come down and get like chased off, and then the Acclaim make the save and. MJF basically kind of just tells them all to fuck off. <laughs> yeah. Um, refuses to scissor Max. Um, yeah, it's one of them, so, isn't it? Where it's like Roddy's like, oh, you're picking the kingdom, obviously, right? And Max is like, fuck, MJF's like, fuck no, you guys are fucking weirdos. And then, yeah. and then Max, and then Max Castle like, oh yeah, so that means you're picking the acclaim. That's awesome. And he's like, no, you guys are fucking sex offenders. Well, like, not exactly yeah. those words, but you know, you're, you're sex people. Yeah. So you know, it's like. Yeah, and then uh, Faye and had a completely normal one. Yeah, so as as MJF like walks out, Kenny Omega comes and challenges him because his streak is about to be eclipsed by MJF. Yeah, um, and on top on top of all of this, I can't remember when it was mentioned, but Samoa Joe has also basically said, "I'll help you out if you give me a rematch for the title." Yeah, yeah. and also Wardlow said he's going to beat up MJF. Wardlow was, Wardlow's like, "I'm just going to rip your head clean off your shoulders and stuff some stuff down it." And it's then like, I don't even yeah. want the title. I just want to murder you. <laughs> I just want to take everything you love away from you. Yeah, so it's yeah. just like, yeah, okay. Um, so yeah, MJF's got a a massive target on his back. Um, we then got. Right, so, RBG... so I'm, I'm, hang on, before we move on, I've, like, so I need, I need to just like shout at the internet for a bit here because there's so many. Bad faith dickheads have been complaining that oh oh no this is too complicated I don't like this because I can't follow the storylines no the storyline is MGF has been a prick for most of his life and now it's all catching up to him and he's got loads of people trying to murder him yeah, yeah. basically um, but, but the one uh-huh. person who likes him is at home injured because he, he hurts himself trying to save MGF well there's another one who likes him but he doesn't want him anything to do with him I don't does he um, like him or does he just want to like do sex things with him I don't know yes um. <laughs> So, yeah, uh, then we got RVD and Hook uh, defeating the Dark Order. Fun little match. Um, I mean, RVD and Philly just hits, doesn't he? So, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we we got a reveal of Tony Storm's new butler, Luther. Which... Luther. 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 I did not know I needed. Uh, but here we are. <laughs> um, yeah, just more of this, please. Um, we then got uh, Tony Schiavone introducing Sting and Darby. Um, uh, the fucking Grim Reaper come out, Ric Flair. Um, no, thank you. Um, good to see the Tony Khan got Sting a helicopter though. Locomotive um, enthusiast, Ric Flair. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Um. <laughs> and uh, oh shit, we haven't even spoke about Ric Flair and TNA. I thought 
That's another no, fever dream. No, no, no um, more TNA. Come on. No, we've had, we've, we've uh, had enough for this week. There's more. There's plenty of time for that. Don't you worry. Yeah. So, uh, Christian and his two sons come out, and Christian basically just tore Flair and you arsehole, which is amazing. Uh, so this, and he was this, like, this, uh, this, this was like the silver lining on the Flair disappointment. It was like, oh, Rick Flair's here, but oh, well, at least here's Christian to like make him like. Yeah, to, to roast him basically. I loved how he was like, you know, there can't be a god because this guy is still alive. Yeah, he's like, he's yeah. like, the, I, if it, uh, if there was a god, he would Flair would have died twenty years ago. Yeah. Um <laughs> Just Christian, just tearing Flair, and you fucking asshole, which he's is like, amazing. What? He he got you some gold chains, a cheap suit, and a black liver. Well yeah. done, Sting. It was like, what the fuck. Amazing. I love how like I love um, how like it's gotten to a point now. Christian's so good that whenever his music hits, there's like that little bit of anticipation in the crowd. And I was like, oh shit, what's he gonna do? Like, what's he gonna say? Yeah. To this yeah. <laughs> Christian's the fucking best. I love him. Um, yeah, and there was a um, Jericho interview. The Jericho Megaverse. Yay! It's bad. Um, Yay. Yeah. So Jericho basically said he's got a big friend of his own. Probably gonna be Jericho, isn't it? Gary um, show. Goldberg, maybe? Could always be Goldberg. No. no. Um, Captain Insano. Um, Gary Goldberg. Don't worry about it. Um, the, the, the Jericho Megaverse is fine. Um, yeah, then we got um, the elite defending the ROH World Six Man Tag Championship. Uh, sorry? The hard you, you, you mean the Hungbooks? They no, they're not allowed that. to call themselves that. They. they, <laughs> they they had to sell the IP to the Dark Order. I mean, come on, keep up. Um, yeah, they they retain successfully retained against the Hardys and Brothers A. I think uh, after, le- I think legally that the Young Bucks should be the only people who are allowed to wrestle the Hardys in 2023 and going forwards because they're the only team, that, they're the only people who can get a really good match out of them. Yeah, I reckon Lucha Bros would. I don't. I don't. I I think Penta would hit Matt Hardy so hard he would cease to. <laughs> And I he think wouldn't, he, would, he, would, he, would, he would die. He'd yeah, just like, travel to a different dimension. And Ray <laughs> Phoenix and Jeff would be like so insane. They'd try and like outdo each other, but it just wouldn't end well for Jeff. No. What? 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 What about um, best friends? They'd probably be alright. I think yeah, best friends would do it. If if you want to do something schlocky, like a, a little like a little brawly hardcore thing, like the best friends and yeah. parties, I'd, I'd 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 want to see that. That'd be fun. Let um, yeah. I'd love to see best friends do a do a uh, deletion match. I think that'd be fucking funny. Ah, uh, they could use a chainsaw. Chuck could <laughs> Chuck, swear. Chuck Taylor has already probably done cinematic matches. I'm trying to think now. Not in, sure not, in AW, not in AW, isn't it? Like, not in AW, Chuck, but... It... If Chuck Taylor goes his whole career without doing a, a cinematic match, then there's something wrong with the world. I yeah. mean, they, they sort of did with the parking lot brawl, the first one. Um, and the second one. Um, can, can, can we can we talk about some real heel shit though, which was um swear Oh my god, this is amazing. I don't want to talk about this. Um, so yeah, um <laughs> Prince Nana broke into to Hangman's house and Swear walked in like whose house? <laughs> um he, he ripped up some shitty painting off Hangman's fridge. Um and then he he gave Hangman's baby uh Prince first, Nana shit. First of all, he sat on the couch and read a bedtime story. Yeah. Was it Hangman's um, book? It was, wasn't it, I think? Yeah. He was reading. I think um, so, yeah. And then, yeah, he, he gave um, he, he gave Hangman's baby a um, Prince Nana shirt because he's what? a... The same one you've got, you? Yeah. Top quality shirt, that. Because uh, he's a he's an upstanding member of society. Uh, he, he may have also... He? Don't worry about it. Um, oh. He may have also threatened uh, Hangman's baby and said he's going to... He's basically going to hold a grudge for generations. Um, but yeah, this is awesome. Even Prince Nana was upset about this. Well, he, didn't, he said to um, like, he said to Hangman's kid, he's like, it's your father's fault. I'm never going to forget that, and neither are you. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then Nana was like, boss, we got to go. This is this is too far. <laughs> yeah, it was just like glaring at Nana. Um, and then he had to eat all the grapes. He did. He did. Um, but yeah. Um, Swerve's gonna do another crime on Hangman, and he. I'd yeah. I'd like this tasty. You're gonna you're gonna be on board with this fate once you know what it is. You'll be on board with it too. Uh, horror or war match? Just give me that. Yes, absolutely. Give me that. What's that? 
it's a two out of three falls death match from Lucha on the ground. Yeah, it's the, ma- it's the yeah. match that it's the match that Swerve and Al Fox had in the Junior Round. Yes, yeah. that's what I would Swerve, like. Swerve also had one with Rich Swan in wrestling revolver. Um, yeah, which is equally good, but that was like an ambulance match as well. Um, yeah, Swerve, Swerve did a double stomp through a pane of glass onto a onto Al Fox. It was upsetting. Um, but yeah, just just, just I do think that. you could probably end this with like something like that, like not it. You know what I mean? Like, but yeah, I, I think I think they only need to have one more match. If I'm being honest, yeah. So you could do like Texas Death or what you just said. I, like, I, I kind of like I, I kind of like how Texas Death match is becoming Hangman's thing as well, which is yeah. like yeah, because Swe- Swerve doesn't really have to prove anything to Hangman. He's just he's just harboring a grudge because Hangman fucking cost him the TNT title shot. Um. So yeah. Uh, he only needs to beat him again, and then you just forget about Hangman and go cry and met MJF or something. Um, next, uh, Rene was trying to get an interview with Adam Copeland. Uh, Sting and Darby rocked up, and this was weird. So Sting was going on about him and Adam Copeland go way back. Since when? <laughs> like, Since they were like, at the same like a company. fucking month. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. Uh, Ed, Edge was retired when Sting was in WWE. Yeah, I know, but like, as far as loose connections go, that's what Sting thinks, isn't it? Like, Never even been on the fucking same screen together until Wrestle Dream. Um, we know but, that, but yeah. Sting doesn't. It's like, okay, I'll, Grandpa, let's get back, let's get you back to bed. It, Sting, to be fair, Sting caught a banging promo here. Um, just like screaming at Adam set because Adam was like saying he doesn't want to fight Christian, and. Sting was just like, just said, wake up, he's going to stab you in the back, just like um, he's already tried to. Uh, Sting will oh, know man, all about that. Just, he's Christian. Christian. Yes, a, Sting is the expert on betrayal, isn't he? Like, that's his whole thing. Sting we're is far get, too trusting. Yeah, we're going to get heel edge and Christian here. That's happening. Yeah, um, yeah next up we got um, Sheeda defending the title against Ruby Soho. This was fine. Uh, yeah. A bit weird. Up. I've not I've not seen it, but a lot of people didn't like this, which means it was probably a six out of ten match that happened to feature two women, so it's automatically the worst no, match of all time. You know what, right? I didn't like this because the psychology didn't make any sense. So I've so seen Ruby, a lot of I've, I've seen a lot of things like Ruby tried to get cheated disqualified, which makes no sense because yeah. she could win a title that way. Yeah. Um and yeah, it just it it was just a little bit nonsensical. It fell flat a bit, didn't it? Yeah, they didn't really have much. They didn't really click either. Um, no, they didn't. I, I just, I just thought the chem, like the chemistry wasn't there. The Weird, psychology wasn't there. Ruby's great. had banger matches late on TV, and she just had banger matches late on TV. So I don't think it's anybody's fault. Mm-hmm. I think, like you say, it's just like it just didn't all come together. It's, it's like that Britain um, tire match, or Jericho yeah. and Adam Cole, where they were having good matches and then they wrestled each other, and it was like just no chemistry. Sometimes it happens. Yeah, it's just a bit of a clunker. You just got to learn from it. Um, yeah, so then MJF's getting checked in the trainer's room. Uh, Samoa Joe approaches him and basically says, I'll watch you back as long as you give me a title match. I think I think Joe's going to kill MJF at World's End. And the World End's there for MJF in Long Island. Um, which coincidentally got announced just there at, uh, at the 7th or 30th. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then the, the, first, the was- first ever pay per view that AEW done in New York. Yeah, because Grand Slam's TV. Um, and then the main events, um, Brian Danielson and Claudio defeated Akada and Orange Cassidy. Akada's 0-3 in AEW. That's wild. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, th- this is awesome. Um, Claudio and Akada need to wrestle more. I can't I can't wait for Orange and Claudio to happen next week because that'll be oh, fucking Claudio unreal. Claudio and Orange in this, didn't he? Claudio yeah, did an orange in this um, by absolutely criming him with an uppercut. Um, so th- there was a really cool spot where Orange went for an orange punch and Claudio caught him into a big swing. Yeah. Oh, nice. And then Orange got out of it, went for another orange punch, and Claudio reversed it into the pop-up uppercut. And then Orange was just dead. Um, and th- this was after uh, Orange hit an uh, orange punch and then a car that hit a rainmaker on um Danielson. on Danielson, which 
then Danielson went down clutches his face, which is where there's obviously people think might have been when he got injured. Probably was. Um but this this match was tremendous. Uh, it it genuinely felt exciting when um when when Danielson um was in the ring with a carder again. Yeah. And, and nice then there was there was that stare down with the at the end with best friends including Rocky and Hook and BCC um while Danielson was like getting treatment and a card is just like going, Oh, you poor arm, you poor arm. <laughs> <laughs> You're an absolute bastard man. Um He was wearing the black trunks though. He was. That's when you get me a new carder. To be fair, that's all these war this year, isn't it? Those black ones. Yeah. No with like no gold or anything. Yeah. A little red black. trim. Yeah. Um but yeah, really, really fun match. Uh, I really enjoyed this. Um and yeah, good good show in all. Um next, so Tasty, have you seen any Rampage at all? No, but I need to. I was like, oh, surely I can skip Rampage this week. And then I realized that not, not, a, not only was it um, Santana v. Ortiz, it was also mm-hmm. Takeshita versus Takao Fletcher, which I absolutely need to see. So I really yeah, so... enjoyed Santana and Ortiz, and I didn't expect to as much. Like, it's like yeah. I wasn't I wasn't super invested in it, and then the match happened, and I was like, oh, shit, this is really well, good. Weirdly, they didn't announce that it was a false count anywhere match until the match started. Yeah. Um, and that was fine. Uh, it was a really fun match. Mm-hmm. It was a really nasty bump where um, Mike Santana hit Ortiz with a um, a suplex off the apron onto a bunch of chairs. Um, there was also like whatever that finisher was that Mike Santana hit that was like pop up, like I, I don't know what it was, like either a pop up blue thunder bomb or a pop up pop up like pile driver almost. I think it was um, more on the pile driver side, to be honest. Well, I think it was because Ortiz like just fucking got like drilled from it. <laughs> it looked like it, it looked like it was meant to be like a blue thunder bomb. Um but crying, but, yeah. Yeah. Um yeah. Mike Santana picked up the win. Uh, after the match, Sunjay Duck come out and tried to like recruit Ortiz and Ortiz like sort of reluctantly followed him. Um All right. it, inter- interesting match. It was it was it was good. Um it wasn't bad but it was just interesting. Um mm-hmm. It was a really, really good video package for MJF and Kenny, which made this feel oh, like a it was massive. So deal. good, G- given given how like little Bill this had, this like really like up the ante. Um, there was like MJF and Kenny were both doing like kind of sit down interviews, and just at the end, like Jay White coming and confronted at Kenny and was like pointing out that Kenny hasn't hasn't beaten him. Um, and they um, they showed pic- footage like of the New Japan match. We did. Um, so and then Don Callis come in and try to get MJF to join the Callis family. And MJF basically just pointed out, I don't need your help because I've done everything already. It was um, great. It was so good. Yeah, it just, it just added that little wrinkle to like, there's, there's like danger waiting in the wings for both men. Um, we then got a uh, backstage. Hmm? I need Kenny and Switchblade like now. Oh, I think that's probably going to happen at World's End. Um, mm-hmm. We then got a backstage thing with Willow, Sky Blue, and um, Chris Statlander. Just more like more of them going, "Oh yeah, Sky Blue, you're spooky now. Why?" Um, yeah. Um, just just let them join the House of Black. <laughs> she has a hell of a costume change, didn't she? From then till Collision. My brain stopped working for like a good five minutes. <laughs> but speaking of spooky, we had a spooky return next. Did we? Well, um, we, had the, we had a return. Uh, no, uh, actually, tasty. Uh, Kip Sabian was cut the promo. And no, he's, he's, the he's, he, he's kind of spooky. Box pair of it. Um, yeah. But we did get a return because Mark Briscoe came back and attacked yes. Kip Sabian. Which nice, nice to see Mark back. Yeah, yeah, he looked great. Um, I, I'd be down for a little Kip Sabian Mark Briscoe feud. Um, yes, I would as well. Yeah, then we got more kind of like sexual chemistry with um. Yeah, I Angela just, I just, I, I just love oh. Ruby and Ruby and Parker. It's horny on me. This is fine. It's it's really yeah. strange. Um. Yeah, he basically uh, 
Cool Hand Andrew had lost his comb and Ruby brought it back. And yeah. Did he leave it in hers last night? Was that the thing? No, he left it in Caitlin. Oh, right. Oh, he's um, one, one of them, isn't he? It was, it was just Ruby trying to do a nice thing. And then sure. it was like, well, why, 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 are you, why are you going out your way to do that on camera, Ruby? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then we got a spooky return, which was Abaddon coming back at Halloween. Uh, this was so good. Against uh, Sky Blue, Willow, and Anna J. And Abaddon won. Um, apparently, they'd been out for four months with injury, but then yeah. there was no way uh, that's the they, why. They, they broke the collarbone in November, didn't they? Which isn't like a, it's like a couple of months. I thought like they last... got hurt in July. No, they got hit last November. They broke the collarbone. Um, they mentioned that on oh. on um, Collision, but I don't know. If they, I, 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 I'm assuming there was another in- injury. Yeah, Fightful mentioned that they'd been hit like in July well, they as were well. Re- they wrestled like they'd been wrestling other places as well. Yeah. Um, but they they'd only made their in ring return um not that long ago. Um, Revolver. yeah, I've done picks up the win. Uh. Tony Stone and Luther had a little bit of uh, sitting on the stage as well, which was fun. Um, eating, eating fruit. Yeah. So uh, es- essentially, um, Tony Storm has been named as like the number one contender for the women's title, and a full gear. But she has just got like a gauntlet of challenges before she then gets to Tony Storm. Um, yeah, the the acclaim there. Uh, then say the seven days or oh sorry eight days away from the 69th day as champions and they're gonna have a 69 69 day on next week's collision Mm -hmm. um max said he wanted to invite mjf and he got told off he's not returning his calls (laughs) yeah um and then the main event we got uh takeshita uh, versus Kyle Fletcher, an absolute fucking banger of a match. Yeah, it was um, so good. Yeah, a- after the match, um, so Takeshita won. Uh, after the match, uh, Takeshita threw Fletcher out of the ring, and then Fletcher ran into the ring and hit um, hit Takeshita and Hobbs both with chair with a chair. Um, as Hobbs was about to murder uh, Fletcher, Don Callis stopped him and. Basically told Fletcher that he wanted wants him to be his re- apprentice now because he could see the hate uh, in his face, and he gets Hobbs to kind of see it, and then like they sort of all just leave together. Um, it was a bit weird, wasn't so, it? Yeah, it, it it feels kind of like they've been spinning the wheels of this one a bit, but it, it's cool. Um, makes a mm-hmm. bit more sense now that Fletcher's kind of. It, it felt like like they were trying to do what they did with you to join a BCC, but not. As well executed, um. Well, yeah, it, it was it was fine. Um, again, good episode of Rampage. Um, yeah, it was. And that takes us to Collision. So, opening match, uh, Jay White defeated AR Fox. This was an absolute banger. It was, it was so it was so good. I was I was a little unsure. I was like, oh, is AR Fox a bit cold now? People are like, you know, is he not gonna? Is he not got it? And like, oh no, he's got it. Like this is this is think, absolutely fine. I think, the thing with AR Fox is he just shows up, puts on a fucking awesome match, and then we might not see him now for like another like month or two. Also, quite interesting. Jay White won clean. There was no, there wasn't too much fuckery. No, there wasn't. Yeah. Well, AR Fox um, managed to neutralize uh, the entire Bang Bang Gang, didn't he, by diving out onto all them? <laughs> yeah. Like aerial murder. Yeah. I liked after yeah. the match that they, they, we had another little. Um... MGF, sorry, another little acclaim segment where it turns out Max Caster had been catfished and was sending presumably dick pics to some rando. Well, before that as well, MJF tried to um, MJF tried to retrieve the triple B. The bang bang uh, belt. Because, yeah, because yeah, they'd, um, they'd left the bang bang belt on the uh, announce table for Kevin Kelly to watch, which is a bad idea in general. Um, <laughs> and, just don't leave it in Kevin Kelly's hands. It's just not, it's not what you need. Yeah, M- MJF jumped the barrier, tried to run off with it, and then Jay White just about stopped him. And MJF realized he was about to get his ass kicked if he didn't run off. Yeah. Um, yeah, then then it turned out that Max Caster had been ca- catfished by uh, <laughs> by someone saying they were MJF. Um, yeah, but they only had 200 followers. Yeah. Um, 
And I like how Billy Gunn just took his phone off and put it in his pocket. <laughs> he was like, go and stand at the back. I, I, love, I love the way they just make him stand in the corner, like in the backstage <laughs> segment. So like a naughty good. kid. Well, they do the rest of the promo. Yeah. Oh, it was, it was so much fun. Yeah. I'm, um, I'm actually really intrigued to see where this is going. Like, is it, are they going to come around to it? Or like, is, are we going to get MGF with, with the acclaimed at some point? I think it'll probably be this week. Uh, yes. Yeah. M- MJF versus Bullet Club Gold with three partners of his choosing. Uh, speaking um, of Bullet Club Gold, yeah, we had a bit of sad, sad peacock noises. This made me sad. Oh, this was the, so surprising. Did, was this it, even an ass boys, or was this... No, just just the guns in action, and then the ass boys murdered the the boys. The boys versus um, the ass boys. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Dalton Castle got like nice little surprise. Dalton Castle, which makes me happy. Um, more Dalton Castle on TV, please. Yeah, just have him do his entrance every. He doesn't have to wrestle. Just have him do his entrance every week and then go back to the back. Yeah. That's fine. I'm, I'm okay with that. <laughs> yeah. I I I want him to. I uh, give him a belt. Fuck it. Give him, White Castle. Not the TNT. Not the TNT Championship because you know. Uh, just, just 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 the World Championship. That's fine. Give him the triple B. That, that, Daddy's got that at the moment. Um, it, can be, it can be it can be the big boys belt. Yeah. <laughs> no, just just like international championship. If you want to get it off Orange again, just get it on fucking Dalton. Mm-hmm. Um, that'd be fun. Um, I'm sure Max likes peacocks. Really, anyway. Don't worry Fine. about it. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, then Ryan Nemeth was interviewed by Lexi Nair. Uh, he's I about love. To... I loved this so much. It was like, fucking brilliant. Ryan Nemeth is like the master of physical comedy, and like he really showed it in this segment. Like his 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 like. The way his whole like body like chemistry changed, the whole way his, his like sort of body language changed yeah. when the door opened and he saw what was on the other side was just oh it hey. was superb. Was this foreshadowing though? For what for Dolph? For, for Nick? Yeah, for Nick yeah, Nemeth. absolutely. Because, because they they did the whole um like Miro hates the Nemeth family anyway because of the whole um Dolph and CJ thing in WWE. Yeah. Um. So. <laughs> Yeah, this right. Ryan Nemeth. I, I'd be okay with it. Um, yeah, me too. So yeah, Ryan Nemeth knocks on the door to speak to CJ. Uh, Miro answers the door, pulls him in, crimes him. He's so um, polite though when he answers the door. He answers the door. He's like, "Oh hi, come in." And then like he just grabs him and like throws him in the room. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I love the way Ryan now is like, "Oh no, it's okay, honestly." <laughs> um, yeah, this is great. Uh, next we got the. AW Women's Championship in a Fright Night fight match. This was amazing. Fight match. This was so much um, fun. Yeah, she the best Abaddon. Um, you know what the biggest surprise here was for me? Put me a little yawn. Kevin Kelly was bang on with the pronouns. Yeah. Um. um Tony, 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 Tony mixed up, a few, mixed up a few times and, and used um, female pronouns, but everyone else was on the them and they, and it was great. I am. Um... I was at Nat and I was watching it with Nat and Pete and oh my god, Pete I saw Pete's brain just malfunction when Sheeda came out. That was Ada Wong. So yeah, yeah. She Sheeda was dressed as Ada from Resident Evil. Um Abaddon was dressed as Spawn, which was fucking badass. Uh, yeah. Todd McFarlane so commented and said he loved it by the way. Yeah, I saw Twitter, that. Which um, is great. Yeah. Um re- really, really good match. Um I've never seen so Abaddon both nights got massive pops as well. Yeah. Everybody like, everyone wants fucking Abaddon. loves Abaddon. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah, Dan Housen so... coming back. I mean, I'm just saying. Ah. Uh, Dan Housen is coming back. Um, one of the very, if, you want, if you want a little spooky team, it's right there. Yeah. Um, after the match, time as Tony Storm came, came out, she lay on the fucking announce table Nonsense. and was just like shouting at Tony Schiavone. Well, pulled an orange. Pulled, 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 looked like he had the best an, night. Pulled an orange out of her pants, which the internet had a total normal one of us. Yeah, she threw it in the crowd, and then someone's trying to sell it on eBay. Yeah. Um, which I mean, come on, do better, guys. Uh, yeah, um, but I'm excited if we get Sheeda and Tony again because the only thing is, I feel like Sheeda deserves like an actual good run with this belt. Like, yeah, yeah, they've hot shotted it to it. Twice now, but I feel like Tony needs to win it. Um, but I they could have held off a little bit longer. Maybe I don't know. Send Tony world, into then. this really weird like pit of despair and just make her go even more insane. I'd be okay with that. 
Yeah, but she's stupidly over, so it makes more sense to just put the belt on Tony at this point. Mm. Is the problem like? I, I, it's it's one of those like strike while the iron hot, iron's hot situations, isn't it? Yeah, like we can't we can't just have like Tony just doing fuck all other than like the other than like the vignettes while like she's like stupidly over. Well, you could have someone mm. cost of the match tomorrow, uh, the cost of this next match, sorry, and then set up a few for her to have adjacent to the title, and then have her mm. come back to it later in the line. Like, if yeah. I don't know if I don't know if you still want to do the Soraya, I don't know if like the Soraya Tony thing is still playing out. If that's still a thing you want to do, you could have Soraya come down and spray Tony, and then you could have Tony versus Soraya because Tony's kind of face now, and you could, this is really over. Yeah. So. You could even have Ruby yeah. and Tony there as well, because like, didn't she screw Ruby out of yeah, the well, shot as well? If the outcast is still loosely a thing, you could have her beat Ruby first to get to Soraya and do that over the course of like a few, like up to the. You could have Tony versus Soraya. Tony, I'm, I'm like, here's a fucking wild concept, okay? I hope, I hope we're all listening here. You can just have a women's match at a pay per view that's not for one of the titles. Yeah, yeah, that's I true. Know. You can. You can. I know, I know we've got no evidence. I know we've got no evidence to support this, but it can happen. I've seen it in other whoa, companies. Whoa, whoa. Sheeda, uh, not Sheeda, um, Soraya and Brit. Yes, true. But yeah. that was the yeah. But you can just have a blow off to a, a really well booked women's feud that ends up happening at a baby. She there and Serena D before Serena D went mental. Um Yeah, that was a good one actually. Uh, they they were in a really good feud. Um either way, um I I don't know that I, I do think it makes sense to just put the belt on Tony and then like see what else they can kind of like storyline put together. Um given given Sheeda there's such a bank's title rinse. Oh, oh, Mercedes Monet versus Tony Storm though. Yes, please. Yeah. Um, I still feel I still feel the money for Mercedes first match though is Heavy Soraya. Hmm. Based on like what happened in real life. Yeah. <laughs> Although, the the real money is Jamie Hater versus Mercedes. The real yeah, money is just Jamie Hater versus anybody because Jamie Hater yeah. is the best thing in the world. So uh, yeah. Thunder Rosa is doing fuck all at the moment. She's been cleared for ages. Um. Yay. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, there's plenty of people there. Uh, anyway, <laughs> moving on. Um, there was a little video package recapping the history between Shane Taylor and Keith Lee. This was nice. Uh, yeah, another, that was one, great. another one with uh, FTR. Also, and... really sh- that package really showed off how fucking insane sh- sh- shape Shane Taylor's gotten into over the last couple of years. Oh, Shane Taylor's like lost so much weight. And so is Keith, to be fair, recently. Yeah. Fuck me. Like, he looks amazing. He's um, both, both, both these guys are looking like. At the top of the game, physically, no, it's it's. I, I want to see them beat seven bells out of each other. Yeah, Shane, Shane Taylor definitely needs more TV time because he's fucking excellent. Um, yeah, got a little uh, Stark po- promo on on Dax Howard and uh, Gun. Um, then some Ojo crime, Brett Titus. Not much more to say about that. Um, it was it was a bad night for former members of the foundation, wasn't it? It was a fucking awful night for the foundation. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, Rene Paquette interviewed QT Marshall and QTV. Um, Marshall basically just set like called out all the luchadors, which I thought was Jay White's gimmick. But there we go. Um, Claudio then said he's going to make oh the card a pay, and then threatened to crime Orange Cassidy as well. Uh, this basically just playing into the whole AW International Championship match on Dynamite this week, which is going to be insane. Um, Ricky Starks defeated um, FTR Bald uh, in a fun match, really fun match. Um, that was good. After the, so during the match, the House of Black were watching from the crowd. And Julia yeah. was watching from the stage. So, so I love that. Like the lights went off and then it came back on, and the House of Black were just in the crowd. They weren't in the ring; they were just in the crowd. I like. I like to think that's how they, yeah. they move around everywhere. Like if they go to the shops, they just turn the lights off and then they turn them back on, and they're in like the, the groceries. Getting, <laughs> you know. Oh, yeah. until he's like, I forgot to get the milk. Hang on, because lights go off. He goes back, gets the milk. Well, the lights go back on again. He's come back with the milk. Well, uh, after at the end at the end of the match, the lights go off again, and then. Um, House of Black are in the ring. Um, House of Black and Ricky and Big Bill start beating up FTR. Um, and then my fucking boy is back. Um, LFI oh. return. Roosh, Preston Vance, Jose the assistant, and Drew Lithgow as faces. Yeah, um, which is wild. Save for FTR. Um, just, just 
book Rouge first, Brody King again, please. <laughs> yes. They had, they had yes. like such good matches in ROH. Just Rouge first, Malachi. Rouge first, Buddy. Rouge first, Brody. Yes, please. Um, also, just after a list to go with Crime by Malachi at some point, that'd be nice too. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm fucking here for LFI versus the House of Black. Like, that that's a few that I thought we were a lot further away from than was actually getting it now. Mm. Which begs the question, why have they just why did they pivot from um BCC? Injury. Do you reckon it was Danielson getting hurt? Yeah, yeah. probably. But then they I mean, if, if, to... if Danielson's not hundred percent, you can't put him in the ring with Roosh because Roosh will fucking <laughs> annihilate him. Roosh will break his well, eye. Well no, because it was it would have been the House of Black and Ricky and Big Bill versus FTR and three BCC members. Assumedly, yeah. you could still do Mox, Uter, and Claudio. It wouldn't hit as well, though, was it? Like without Danielson there. No, yeah, I don't know. That Danielson wasn't in blood and guts, and it was fine. I mean, remember, remember like, that... I have no problem about it personally because I'm me. But like, like, like Jay, remember that Mox Brody King match that was fucking incredible. Yeah, yeah. We just do that again because that was really fun. I I want yeah, Mox versus Malachi. I want Malachi versus Danielson, Mox versus Malachi. Um, Claudio, Claudio and Malachi King. to do it again because they had fucking bangers in WWE. Claudio and Buddy had fuck as well. Um, yeah. Just you to get in crime but, by all of BCC. Oh, like, next thing I want is Roosh to just fucking murder user. Um, that'd be oh, fucking fun. Um, no. But I, I feel like my boy Ricky's in danger. Um, <laughs> At the moment. Not so pretty, Ricky. By the time uh, they're done with R- them, R- Ricky's gonna get fucking plastered across the collision zone. Um. So yeah, after, uh, it's pretty much straight after this. Andrade El Idolo pretty like distanced himself from LFI. Yeah, yeah then, that's strange, wasn't it? But then CJ Perry offered him a um a service as a manager. And he had um, no fucking idea what was going on. Yeah. Um, he's very confused. Um, Charlotte Flair was probably fuming somewhere. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, another Chris Stander, Statlander, Willow, and Sky Blue thing. I'm already getting a bit bored of these. I'll be honest. Um, Sky basically said anything regarding Julia Hart was between her and Julia. Um, which is yeah, I, I think Sky's going to join the House of Black. Maybe goth, Willow. Goth, goth girls are allowed to have secrets. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Secret goth girl secrets. Um. Then Claudio crammed um, former aunt, hot sauce Tracy Williams. Yeah, so, oh so here, right, my Faye, God. Faye, are you ready to step into the law with me? So, and Jay. Uh, so, <laughs> Tra- Tracy Williams used to be in the colony with Orange Cassidy and Chikara. They used to dress as ants and wrestle with each other. Well, I knew that and, Orange Cassidy was fire ants, but. Yeah, but uh, Tracy, Tracy, Tracy Williams was. Soldier ants? Soldier ants, I think, yeah. Uh, so, he was also in the colony. So, Claudio. And, and Claudio was also in. Uh, this is. This is it's BDK. Yeah. <laughs> oh, BDK are coming. That train's never late. <laughs> well, did you notice as well? Um, just before he like finished uh, Tracy Williams off, he ripped his BCC top off. Did yeah. And did. said, "This is for you, Orange." Yeah. Oh my God, it's I... happening. Oh, just, don't... just what, just one tosses. That's all I want. Eddie will fucking lose his shit at BDK. <laughs> <Hickle, man. laughs> Eddie's gonna Collision go on a fucking one man crime spree. I will um, lose my shit to BDH come back. I won't be. I won't be okay. If Collision can just be like a weird amalgam of Shikara and Lucha Underground, please, that'd be fucking great. You mean AEW? Um, because that's all I want from AEW. You know, with Mox, with Moxie there, just like wondering what the fuck's happening. Wait, yeah, like what year CM, is it? CM Punk just crying because like he want he wanted something completely different, and then oh Collision God, is now a- just like this fever dream that Danielson's just conjuring up. <laughs> it does feel that way, doesn't it? Like it's everything that Punk didn't want is in collision. I, think, I, now. Don't, I don't think he didn't want it, but I do think he had a certain vision for how he wanted collision to play yeah, he out. Wanted and WCW. Not, he wanted WCW. He wanted it to be Nitro. Um and that's And Danielson obviously... had no other ideas. Oh, Dan, that, like, no banger after banger after banger. That Danielson and Jimmy Jacobs watched a load of fucking Lucha Underground and started talking about free will and it was like, oh no, it's happening. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, Wait, hang on. Yeah. So, yeah, t- Tony's just like, Where, where's Brian gone? He's always talking to Jimmy Jacobs and catering and Tony's like, oh god, no. 
<laughs> Jane Taylor had to um, had to murder Jimmy Jacobs for crimes. He, he did murder Jimmy Jacobs. That's true. Um, yeah. So yeah, after this, we got um, the build up to the world title match, which oh boy, this was a good match. Um, I, so I, don't, off, I, I, I don't believe you. I think this match is going to suck. I think you're lying to me. But, First off, um, right at the start, it shows Kenny warming up, and then it shows MJF warming up, and Samoa Joe comes up to MJF um, and says if he needed a friend, he'd help, but only if he was given his rematch for the AW World title. Um, He's not to scream his name. MJF's in so much danger. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, MJF just busted out, of, and Kenny Omega, excuse me, just busted out like a fucking... Tokyo Dome match, didn't he? Um, uh, we, got, we, got, we got the cleaner. Um, we did get the cleaner. Me and Pete were like having a completely normal one. <laughs> and yeah, I was th- drunk by this point as well, so it was even worse. <laughs> this match was outstanding. Um, not an I say you're going to do it justice. I always say that. Go and watch it. Uh, just go and watch it. It was fucking great. They went, what, like, they, they went a long time, didn't they? It was like 40 um, minutes, something like that. Yeah, it was like 30, 40 minutes, including entrances. Um, and they only had like really short 90-second breaks as well. Yeah, it was quite cool with the breaks where they were obviously keeping it in picture and picture, but they had like a, a little countdown on just to say like the 90 seconds was up. But they yeah. used it quite cleverly. And one one was a um, was after that horrifying table bump, which uh, I thought Kenny was going to go to prison for. Um, he thought he was in New Japan again with those tables. He, he hit a sit-out pile driver through a table on a MJF off the apron. Um, but MJF, MJF like took it all on his neck. neck. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then Kenny was holding his knee after after it as well. Um, there was a, this bit as well where um, MJF like did a dive and Kenny had to like run forward to like hmm. for like MJF to fall on him because MJF like didn't get like as much all height. The- uh, falls brief flop where he like yeah. the ropes yeah yeah like um, Kenny like basically ran forward it was wild yeah uh, about the three quarter mark of the match Don Callis tries to come out and get involved with a screwdriver pretty much inconsequentially gets injected immediately um, yeah but, yeah I mean that's, that's those that's, bits with the one winged angel reversal unbelievable uh, like MJF had an answer for the one winged angel the whole time uh, MJF says for Adam and goes for a Panama Sunrise on Kenny. Um, does Kenny reverse it's it into it a... Well. He reversed it into the first he, one. He sat out into, into a pin, the... didn't he? I was yeah, trying to yeah. remember what he did. Um, yeah, Kenny sits yeah. out, a uh, little back and forth of pin, full attempts. MJF eventually... This was after Panama Kenny had had a heat seeker as well and kicked out of it. Yeah. Um, yeah, MJF... Uh, um, Hit a Panama Sunrise and then a heat seeker to pick up the win. Um, clean. And then, no cheating. Yeah. Clean as a whistle. Um, and and then they shook the hands. Yeah. Uh, Kenny and MJF shook hands. Um, after after the show went off the air as well, Kenny basically said that MJF's the future of AW. Um, well, not the future because he's he was like, he's the present, but he's like, he's going to be carrying it's AW on his on shoulders. Back for mm. the next, like, Decade essentially, didn't he? Um, nice. And also, which was pretty cool, was after the fact, uh, Hobbs, Wardlow, Joe, and the Bang Bang Gang were all kind of watching on the monitors as if to say, like, yeah. and they, they did a really good job here where, um, was it Nigel said, um, the wolves are circling them or something like that? And yeah. it was like, oh yeah, everyone's got everyone's got a target on their back. Um, I, I think we're getting Hobbs and Kenny at full gear, which I'm all, all right with. Yeah, okay. yeah, me too. I'd be okay with that. Um, well, did we talk about it? One more, um, one more of the match we did. We are getting a full gear. Is the uh, Bullet Club, um, the Ash Boys versus MJF, and the Ash Boys versus MJF, and definitely not Samoa Joe. Definitely not Samoa Joe. Yeah, probably not. Good if it was Kenny. Would be good if it was Kenny, but it's probably going to be Samoa Joe, say, because then Joe can get his rematch. I'm murder okay. MJF. I'm just, I'm just, I'm, I'm just, 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 just Jay just saying words. It's fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Kenny's too busy in the Jericho Megaverse. Come on, mate. Um, yeah. 
I, it could be worse. It could be in the Jarrett Omegaverse. We don't want that. Um, don't want any of no, that. But, yeah, very, very, very good episodes of AW this week. All three shows, very good. Um, yeah, I, I've yeah. got a lot of wrestling to catch up on. Um. <laughs> Collision in particular was brilliant, I thought. Um, if only for that main event match. But there was some other cool shit in there. Um, mm. But yeah, I was I enjoyed it a lot. Um, take this right. one home and go for Wrestlers of the Week. Wrestler of the Week, yeah. yeah who we got? I'll go last because I've seen the least. So give me your give me your scraps. It, can you um, make them? Gasp. <laughs> um, ooh. I'm I'm trying to. Oh think. no 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 no! Holly Hudson. Fair. Yeah, uh, yeah. That was that was one of the bones I had in reserve because no one else picked her. Yeah. Like DDT'd, uh, turned into DDT, a shark, dressed as another shark, and then got signed by Impact. Like, what more can you do yeah. in a week? What a week! Yeah. Um, I'm gonna go for one sort about the left field here and say Claudio. Okay. He really, really impressed me this week. Uh, I'm gonna curry favor in this household and say, oh, yeah. No, no, wait, Roosh, 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 is back. <laughs> Roosh. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm Korean. I'm, I'm Korean favor, and I'm going with them, Jeff. Uh, because I, well, I haven't even seen the Kenny match, but the match against Juice was a banger. So you know. To be fair, I was I was very close to saying MJF. Um, I will never then, say MJF ever. So we've got Roosh, MJF. We've got Harley Hudson, and obviously Juice Robinson. Even yeah. though he didn't win. Sweet. I, uh, right. I mean, I feel like I feel like we should have Claudio as like an honorary one this week because he he did the Lord's work with that air. Uh, Reversal of the orange punch. So, yeah. uh, as the penal uh, as being penalised for losing, it's now Claudio this week. I, I mean, I mean, have you ever seen anything like that reversal of the orange punch fight? No, You've I seen... thought it was fantastic, <laughs> and even even the murder and Tracy Williams was a treat. So, yeah. just before we go, one last piece of breaking news. Speaking about the Jericho Megaverse, um, they've just announced for the next week's Dynamite um, two point versus Kenny and Jericho. Oh yeah, um, that was that was announced on Collision. Actually, to be fair, yeah, I just I just missed the the part where it it said that. Um, so so the the, Jer- the Jericho Megaverse is fine. Yeah, does it have to be? Yeah, we, we need the Jericho Megaverse and the Jericho Megaverse. I don't need um, any of them. We need all of them. Right. Um, on that on that note, I think that's a lovely place to leave it. We'll leave you with that lovely lovely mental image, uh, and we'll see you all next week for some more wrestling chat uh yeah everyone stay safe enjoy your wrestling goodbye bye hello yes dan housing here dan housing has been summoned you must love this podcast housing the untitled wrestling podcast housing <laughs>